Once again with a program which is devoted to painting and drawing from life. And if it's not landscapes or seascapes from the monitor, it's a still life right in the studio. This morning, a very unfair uh, still life. It is a setup of um, items which are, uh, well, they're on everybody's minds at this point when working here in the studio. However, I think that it's a nice idea to introduce uh, the fact uh, that small paintings have a tremendous charm to them. They're easy, uh, easier to do because you don't spend such a uh, tremendous amount of time covering a lot of space. But then on the other hand, sometimes they're much more difficult because you have to make it work. Uh, however, um, and simple subject matters is what I'm after uh, most of the time. Uh, the simple things, not the great uh, shell and flower arrangements of the Dutch and the French schools of painting, but the simple things that we uh, encounter every day and which are available every day from all kinds of sources. And so here I have uh, the, um, the infamous chocolate eclair and the strawberry tart, uh, all available, uh, uh, purchased right here locally uh, in Hop Hog at the Hop Hog Bakery and uh, ready to pose. And these can stay for many, many hours without any problem of fading or rotting and uh, or becoming uh, less colorful. So uh, I start usually uh, with a prepared canvas board and I put some I put a little bit of toner on it because the um, brilliant light is is very hard on the uh, on the television cameras and on the ge general transmission. So I'm going to lay this out uh, as I do usually from the start. As I always say, there is no possibility without a plan. The plan in painting is the layout. Uh, so just as you would have an architectural plan for uh, anything that you would build in the way of a structure, you have to have a plan to uh, do anything that's got to do with painting. So here's the plan. And uh, of course, a, 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 a somewhat um, a good in knowledge of drawing is going to come into the uh, into anything that you're going to do. However, I assume that drawing is, is going to be uh, part of the of the business of painting from life. Uh, I do not believe that you copy photographs or that you copy other people's paintings or that you make it up out of your head. Uh, making it up out of your head is a, is a fine thing and I do it many times and it's called surrealism and I don't knock it. But what I'm trying to promote on this program is to work from life and to understand how you transfer the second dimension, which is, I mean the third dimension, which is that, uh, to the second dimension, uh, which is the flat surface of a canvas. And that is what I'm after right now. The size of my canvas is going to uh, be uh, cuttable. I can cut this, and so if I'm not occupying the entire canvas, it's because I can fit it into a smaller frame. I just happen to have this one here. Working on canvas board means that I can, in fact, uh, uh, cut it at will. Here is, um, this is, this is for compositional reasons. Instead of just having a tart sitting out in the middle of, uh, of a little, uh, space, I'm, I'm introducing also the, uh, real, uh, I mean the real, the, the, the untreated strawberries, and they will make for a more interesting composition. First of all, there's more color in them, and secondly, they have their little funny, uh, green leaves and so forth, which is a part of the business of setting up a still life composition. You have to remember what it is that is going to make the picture whole. Um, here is the, uh, here's the big one, uh, and 
the uh, eclairs, I'm going to do this in two parts, by the way, because it's, uh, first of all, uh, not possible to do anything genuinely instructive or comprehensible in, the, in just a half an hour. So this is going to be part one and part two of this, um, well, Sweets for the, uh, for the World uh, title sort of thing. And uh, the other m madness about this is that uh, many times people are having birthdays, and many times people have everything they need. There are some people that you just don't know what to give them. Uh, giving them a painting is, uh, is a very nice and viable uh, alternative. And I think that if you were to paint um, a, well, a sort of a cake arrangement, that it would be, first of all, amusing, and secondly, it would last way beyond the birthday, and I think it would have a certain, uh, a certain whimsical charm to it. So let's, let us assume that I'm going to be painting this and that somebody whose birthday is going to be the recipient of this. Uh, I, I do believe that it, it probably, and it's an idea that I, that I had, and I'm perfectly willing to share it with people. Oh, and, and see whether or not anybody picks up on this. This is, of course, taped, and so uh, the chance of my talking to you on the telephone, as I do when, when the show is live, is uh, not possible. But um, always willing to receive uh, uh, letters and uh, comments from the audience about what I do and whether or not anybody has any other suggestions. I, I seem to come up with an awful lot of ideas, and uh, the, uh, I think the, the station called for ideas from the public uh, uh, a few times, a few months back, and I'm not sure that too many came, so maybe my ideas are gonna suffice. The, um, the business of setting up a still life is uh, entirely up to the household in which it's going to find itself uh, set up. Uh, the household uh, is going to have to either understand that you don't touch a particular thing that you have set up, if it's going to be there for any amount of time, and that you can go back to it with ease whenever you have the time. Uh, the best things, of course, to paint are onions and potatoes. They don't rot. And uh, still life of vases and flowers without any, I mean, vases with no flowers in them, and then you simply put the flowers in when you need to. But the painting of a vase is equally as time consuming and difficult as it is to do the flowers. So let me say now, with this first phase of, uh, of this still life, <clears throat> if I find that there is something missing in here, I'm going to build it later and I'll show you how you build it. Uh, because I'm doing it in two parts, that's going to give me the time to maybe revise the business uh, of just having these two items as a subject matter and maybe pop something into the background. Let me see how that works. Uh, that means that you are in on the um, on the business of constructing a painting, which is what one does with still life. You don't do it with landscaping, really. You can do it because landscaping is what it is. You sit there and that's what you see. Whereas this is, a, um, this is an exercise in constructing a painting. It's like you construct uh, an operatic voice. Uh, you are born with an instrument, but you must construct it so that it will become what eventually you hear as an operatic voice. Nobody is born with that way of singing, and uh, still life paintings are more than likely usually built. And this is, uh, this is a, um, a lesson in how you build the painting. Um, something that I haven't touched on before, and I think probably it will be uh, very instructional for people. I'm working with alizarin crimson, a uh, base of white, of course, and a uh, touch of orange, and that's it. I do not have what, what is called uh, spectrum red coming right out of the tube. Uh, I don't think that it's necessary. I think that one should be able to mix the colors that one needs without relying upon ready mixed colors. Uh, one of the most important uh, un ready mixed colors that I avoid is green. I, do, I don't think that you are well served by buying ready mixed green. I'm not putting in a touch of yellow because these uh, strawberries change from pink to orange uh, to maybe very pale white and sometime to very pale orange depending upon the ripeness and depending upon what's been done to them. But for the most part, these are, uh, um, the combination of colors is alizarin crimson, orange, a uh, touch of white, and uh, now once in a while a touch of, uh, of uh, yellow, which is spectrum yellow. 
or cadmium yellow. I, I use cadmium uh, always making sure that I warn people that cadmium more than likely has got uh, poison in it, uh, as, more, as most paints do, and I must emphasize that that's why oil painting with very small children is not advised and certainly probably also ought to be actually forbidden because children tend to um, be less careful than they uh, th that, than adults when they are handling substances which are uh, dangerous. And uh, the base of all oil paints is uh, lead of some kind and it should be kept in mind. When I paint I do not eat and I don't drink and I don't drink anything and I don't uh, and I make sure that my hands are clean after I have painted because of whatever may be left on the on the fingers. So here is a, a sort of a beginning of uh, laying out the uh, the basic color of these strawberries. They um, they uh, they look like a sort of a, a, a conglomeration of just shiny pink and red things. Actually, they are very definitely uh, arranged in, in a conical form. They have an, uh, a very secure shape to them. And uh, it, the, um, the anatomy of this little item has got to be paid attention to. Otherwise, it isn't going to look like what you want it to look like, namely a strawberry. Now, we're dealing not just with a strawberry, because these are also strawberries down here. We're dealing with a uh, a fooled around type of strawberry. Somebody's done something to these, uh, namely they've glazed them and they've covered them with some with a substance that makes them shine and they've also probably been sugared. So they have to, you have to be able to tell whether or not this is actually um, coming across, whether my treatment of this is going to tell you that story. Uh, I am hoping that with the introduction of all of these shiny spots and uh, there are, they are many of them because of the lighting in the studio, and that the fact that these are uh, prepared, uh, sweetened, and glazed strawberries can be maybe uh, gotten away with with just the introduction of these very multiple highlights. Uh, and the interesting thing is that there's a, there's, a, there's a sort of a semicircular bunch of them here, like little lights in, in um, at Arby's, let's say. <laughs> anyway, here are the here is the uh, here is the thing that is going to hopefully make these appear to be um, what they are, namely uh, little confection strawberries, as opposed to the ones that are uh, on the uh, on the table next to them. The um, uh, and we will stand back and look at these later and see whether or not that has actually worked. The, um, the color selection here, I, uh, on, my, on my live show, a lady called me up and asked me to talk about the, um, the colors that I use and the mixing of them, because obviously mixing these colors is a, um, is a mystery to a lot of people who have never dealt with color mixing before. And of course, the business of painting by numbers, which is an aberration in the, uh, in the whole general business of producing paintings, should never be done. You get a little jars that are numbered four and five and some whatever, and then you're told to put that number in a certain place, and you learn absolutely nothing from it. And so uh, whoever invented that probably has made a tremendous amount of money, and good luck to him. But um, it, is, it has not taught anybody anything. Actually, as I say many times, I see those paintings uh, for sale in yard sales, uh, the frame of which is the uh, part that brings the money, certainly not what's in the frames. And those paint by numbers are, are uh, maybe just a pastime. Certainly has nothing to do with painting. Uh, the colors here are yellow ochre, touch of orange, and some white. And I have not subdued these colors with any opposite tones. Uh, everything in this, uh, in this arrangement is pretty pure. Uh, it's, uh, there, are no, there are no real uh, grays and mauves and so on until we get around to the shadow side of this uh, piece of pastry and that becomes slightly darker, a uh, little bit of mauve and a touch of cobalt blue, uh, uh, curiously enough, uh, will give me the, um, the darker tone that I need for this little piece of pastry here. Maybe just a trifle more, touch of, um, a touch of uh, blue and alizarin crimson, which give me a little bit darker tone here. Um, okay, uh, underneath here, uh, there, is a dark, uh, there is a dark shadow cast. A very, it doesn't look like it's important, but this is what is going to separate this little piece of pastry from the little um, uh, uh, tin foil cup that it is sold in. And this is all part to do with realism. Uh, I, I insist upon trying to make clear that the realism that I deal with is because I have observed it. I have not relied upon any um, 
anybody else's selection of these things and I am observing this looking at it I can't make this up there is no way in the world that I would be able to invent what I'm seeing here and that's why I keep talking about working from life. Uh, the, um, the interest that is aroused by painting what you see is ever present when I work on these things. And anybody who has gone through my classes whenever, when I have them, which is rare and uh, no longer do I do it because I don't have the time, uh, that they will admit that the, the observation that they, uh, I that they experience uh, when they do these, uh, these still lives uh, from, from observing, uh, that they say that uh, they've seen things that they've never seen before in their lives and uh, that they find themselves totally intrigued with the idea of working from life. So, uh, so much for, uh, here is that brilliant highlight on the tin foil cup. If it doesn't work now, it'll work a little later when the paint dries somewhat and stops picking up the color from, there it is. Uh, you lay it on a little bit thick, and that's what gives it a nice, a nice painterly technique to find some thick paint once in a while uh, on the highlights. Yeah, it's very, very bright because it is, after all, tin foil, and it goes all the way around the, um, the little cup. So, the... Um, the need to, uh, to uh, analyze and, and observe something which is apparently as trivial uh, as a piece of pastry is a lesson very much uh, to be, to be uh, understood that it uh, will help with all sorts of other of other um, endeavors in painting. The observation is what I'm after. After that uh, little lecture, I'm going to break for just a moment. Don't go too far away. I'll be right back. again with the um, with the morning pastry as you might call it uh, the um, the business of doing simple little things and the charm which I think we hopefully uh, the charm that they will elicit will um, uh, sort of light up the uh, po possibility of people being interested in painting still lives with very familiar and very available things the question that is posed to me probably more often than, than, than any other is how do you know what to paint and so if you do not have the uh, the inspiration on your own let me just put forth the idea of painting what is familiar to you and what you have available to pose for you. These are not only available to pose, but uh, of course, when it's all over, you uh, pick them up and eat them, uh, which is, um, you know, one of the bonuses. And uh, if, provided you don't let this thing sit out for eight days, and uh, obviously you're not going to start chewing on that after that period of time. But um, you should be able to get one of these small uh, studies done within a matter of well, I would, I hate to put a timing on things, but if you can sit down and concentrate, you should be able to do something as simply rendered as this in a matter of two hours. This is taking a half an hour. First of all, uh, uh, if I don't know what I'm doing by now, I should get out of the business. And I can do things more quickly than most people. But I, th I think that for the people who are, who are uh, doing this uh, on their own, uh, uh, three hours at the most should be able to produce, after some practice, of course. I'm not saying that this can come off uh, easily uh, fast. But after a little bit of practice, I would see, it would seem to me that, um, that three hours would probably be uh, a reasonable amount of time to devote to this uh, project. Um, 
as you can see, I'm on the I'm on what you might call the live and un uh, and untreated strawberry now, and it has its own. It has I, I picked these out at uh, the Wallbaum market up here. Ninety nine cents a pound. Who can resist it? And uh, I don't know if they will be by the time you get there, but that's what they were this morning. And you can't get a still life for uh, any cheaper than that. A model costs you five dollars an hour, uh, the cheapest, or fifteen, or whatever. Uh, I usually have my friends post for me as models because I find that, um, well, uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to pay the funds to have a model post for me. And besides that, they get tired, and I get, Im I get worried that I'm subjecting something to something to somebody that's very uncomfortable. So my business of using models is quite rare. Uh, and besides that, I'm a landscape painter and get into the studio not as often as I would if I was just a portrait painter. Uh, I'm doing a portrait now of a, of a, of a man uh, who set up the uh, therapy clinic in Winchester, Virginia. And it's a quite fun thing to do because I'm doing him with all his materials around him. All right, here we have, um, I do not have any uh, sap green on my palette, uh, but I'm going to fabricate green, and this is for the lady who wanted to know how I mix my colors. This green is mixed with uh, black, ivory black, not um, lamp black, but ivory black, and spectrum yellow, and I think that you'll find that it's a very acceptable, nice, dark, uh, green, rich color, uh, which uh, may or may not come through clearly on the, uh, on the screen, but it's, uh, it's the kind of green that I, a little bit more yellow, I think will probably enhance it, and a touch of this yellow green will give it a little bit more uh, life on the light sides. These, these, little, these little leaves are, uh, have sort of been crushed in the, uh, in the shipping of them and in them bringing them here in a paper bag. But um, they're, they're beautifully fresh, and uh, the little green leaves are, of course, what I'm always after uh, for painting. The, um, the uh, need to uh, select what you're going to paint may be 50% of the uh, problem of what to paint in still life. I know that, uh, that um, what interests me doesn't necessarily interest other people, so the selection is uh, one of the main parts of uh, how to go about still life painting. I can give you all the ideas in the world, but if they don't, if they don't interest you, it, it, it's pointless for you to begin to, uh, to keep staring at this thing. You're going to be looking at this thing for hours, and if you're not interested in it, then it becomes a chore and it becomes uh, um, an assignment which has uh, less inspiration than it might. So what you're after is something that is going to inspire you. Uh, some people want wonder why I'm inspired by onions. Well, onions have a wonderful skin around them and very paper-like and translucent. And I've always been interested in the form, the wonderful minaret form of an onion. It's shaped like um, the top of a Russian uh, church. Uh, and I don't know why, why that would interest me. But, uh, but uh, onions interest me. What interests me less are eggplants. Uh, I have found myself really worried about ever having to do a setup with an eggplant. I just couldn't care less about about that great big purple shiny ugly looking nothing of a thing and so I'm telling you what my selection are I'm not, not to be amusing but just to tell you how I think about things and whether or not that will uh, in, in, in endeavor to give you an idea of what you might like to sit down in front of for a long period of time mushrooms are great fun they do turn uh, colors very rapidly you can put a nice white um, velvety looking mushroom in front of you and an hour later it's sort of brown and, and purple and not particularly attractive. <laughs> so mushrooms are a problem. But anyway, apples work very nicely. I, I'm, I'm interested in the in the uh, shape, color, and form of all apples. Green, yellow, red, um, all, all apples uh, interest me. Uh, flowers, I think that there is not one flower that I'm not interested in, so that will take care of that one. Uh, all flowers, except the bird of paradise. The board to tears with the bird of paradise. I don't think it's an especially attractive um, p um, flower, and it's just too crazy and erratic. So, um, um, I um, I think that uh, my, my rundown of, of subject matter could go on and on endlessly. However, let me talk about these little pinpoints. These little pinpoints are picking up the light as well as the ones that have been treated on the, on the glazed ones. So I don't know whether or not that comes off or not. However, I'm going to... Um, 
I'm going to leave them and po possibly decide before the show is over whether or not that uh, that is viable. Whether the little pinpoints of glazed light uh, make it different on the uh, on the on the pastry. Uh, I'm sort of a stickler. I really feel like a reporter uh, of items that I'm I'm making you see things that you might not have seen if I hadn't been here to tell you about it. Here are these little pinpoints of light uh, on the. Um, on the top side of this fellow, and then there's some little yellow ones, which are all those, uh, all those what I called. Um, when I was a child, I thought that these were grains of sand on these little uh, strawberries, and uh, I was brought up in uh, in France, where the strawberries are identical to the ones here, except that I think their little sandy things are bigger. Uh, on in the French strawberries, I have a feeling that these little things that that look that look like grains of sand, and I always used to pretend that the um, that the goblins had put uh, grains of sand on the strawberries. Reminiscences of a childhood. Uh, I also thought that uh, empty walnut shells were uh, beds for uh, leprechauns. Anyway, uh, I could go on and on. However, let me let me deal with the um, with the business of trying to get this particular part of this number one study of um, um, well, let's say a birthday present. Let's call this uh, composition a birthday present. Uh, the uh, dark green of the leaves is, is put on over the over the pale green. I think that you'll. Uh, kind of go for the idea that these green leaves do not have to be uh, agonizingly detailed. I think they should just be sort of insinuated at this point with some dark and some light and a little bit of thing. And the only thing that is left to do on this, and I think the time probably is running out, is to put the shadows. And the shadows are vital because they do what I call anchor the subject matter to uh, the ground, floor, ground, table, whatever they happen to be standing on. I've pre-mixed some gray here on my palette because because they are sitting on a gray, uh, on a gray ground, and I'm going to simply interpret uh, the uh, the way the shadow falls from this piece of pastry, and I think that you may agree that this will uh, actually make it look like the uh, this is sitting on this table here. I'm going to I, I will lighten the uh, background, but that is a boring thing to do. It's just the application of a lot of the same color because I'm going to keep it very simple. So the 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 color of the shadow is merely the color of what I'm going to do as the background which is going to be a very pale gray, just a slightly darker. The, um, the multiple shadows that occur here in the studio is because of the quantity of lights. Usually in a home situation, there aren't these uh, tremendous numbers of lights overhead, so you will have less complex shadows. But nevertheless, these shadows are rather interesting, and they sort of do, uh, they sort of do things. You don't, have to be, uh, you don't have to be absolutely accurate about the shadows, but uh, they, they must be there. And I like to have accuracy as close as possible, but here's one that is, that is underneath here from the light that is overhead. Uh, there is a, there's a very strong overhead light here casting this shadow and oh, they smell. These strawberries are beginning to smell and it's quite seductive. I must say that uh, we'll have to keep ourselves in check uh, for the second part of this uh, program, which will be seen probably at a different time. But as you may guess, it has been painted all in the same uh, session of doing this taping. So and here is a very strong shadow underneath this this um, a strawberry because uh, it is uh, very close to the table and it's casting an extremely strong shadow underneath there. Well, uh, talking about strong shadows, it looks like the clock has gone and cast a shadow over the time on this one. Wasn't that a clever segue? Uh, yes. And so I'm going to now close uh, because this is the end of part one of this, um, of this painting, which I think we'll call birthday present. Uh, tune in the next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it with my endless chatter. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.